Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on comparing data transformations using SPSS and Excel. Oftentimes in counseling research, we want to perform parametric statistics to analyze our data, but one of the common assumptions for many parametric statistics is that the dependent variable is normally distributed. When we encounter a dependent variable that is not normally distributed, we have a few options, including conducting data transformations and here I'll be demonstrating several of those. I'll be working with this variable named original, and these are fictitious data. And this variable is not normally distributed, and it is positively skewed. If you're working with a negatively skewed variable, you have to conduct what's referred to as a reflection before transforming data, and I have separate videos that cover that topic. Another option for a negatively skewed variable would be a square transformation. And I've included that here just to demonstrate. However, the square transformation is not typically applied to positively skewed distributions. So I've ordered these transformations from the strongest, which is reciprocal, to the weakest, which is square root. And keep in mind that the strength simply refers to the type of effect it's going to have on the original variable. The strongest transformation is not necessarily the best. The best is the transformation that gets you closest to a normal distribution. And I'll show you how to determine that in a few moments. So before I go through and show you how to conduct these transformations, I want to note here too in this original positively skewed variable that I have no negative values and no zero values here. So first I'm going to delete the functions right below the label. And I'll type them back in so you can see how I created the function. So for the reciprocal data transformation, it's equal sign 1 divided by the original value in this case 0 0.0195. Next I have log 10 and then I have natural log. Usually we would only use one of these because the skewness is going to be the same for either one but I wanted to show you both of them. So for log 10 it's equal sign log 10 then the value and for natural log it's equal sign ln and then the original value. For cube root there's a few different ways we can calculate this. I'm going to use the power function so it's equal sign power then the original number and then you want to raise this to the power of one-third so it'd be one divided by three. That will give you the cube root of that original value. Square root has its own function in Excel and that's SQRT and then the number. And square would just be raising the original value to the exponent of 2. So here again we can use the power function. So power and then the original number and then we're going to raise that to the exponent of 2 or square it. Another option here would be to I'll delete this would be to use the caret so you could do equal sign original value shift 6 which is the caret and then 2 and I'll accomplish the same goal. Next you can see to the right I have a histogram and this histogram is set to the original variable so if I click on the columns you can see the original variable is selected. So this is what the distribution looks like now and you can see the tail points to the right indicating this is positively skewed. If I move a bit further to the right you can see I have all the variables here and then the skewness value. And I calculated this 
using the SKU function. So it's simply the SKU function, S-K-E-U, and then the range. So if I were to delete this first entry, I would go in, equal sign, SKU, and I go over to A2, and then Control Shift down arrow and Enter. And we can see we have a positive SKU here, it's 0.808. And we want to examine how the different data transformations altered the skewness value for the original variable. So if we look at the reciprocal transformation, that transformation changed the skewness to just about zero, negative 0 0.05. So that's a favorable result. You can see the log 10 and the natural log have the same skewness. 0.418, so that's certainly an improvement over the original 0 0.808. The cube root is 0.545 and the square root 0.61. Now again I include the square just to demonstrate this and you can see squaring this original variable made the skewness more positive 1.223. So if I move back to the histogram, click on the bars, we can compare the distributions just by dragging the selection over from original. You see the blue line? I'm just going to drag that over to reciprocal. So we take a look at this distribution. This does look more normal. If we move it over to log 10, we can see this is an improvement over the original, but still positively skewed. Moving over to cube root. Again, an improvement, but still we have that positive skew and square root, fairly similar result. If we take a look at square, we can see this is much worse. So based on what we can determine in Excel, it would appear that the best choice for this particular variable, the one named original, is the reciprocal transformation. But let's test that in SPSS. So moving over to SPSS, I have all the same values loaded in as I did in Excel. The original, reciprocal, log 10, log cube root, square root, and square. And we'll test all these variables for normality. So I'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and I'm going to move all these variables into the dependent list list box. Under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf, and I'm going to check off normality plots with tests. I would normally check off histogram as well, but we've seen that in the Excel worksheet, so there's no need to produce it again. I'm going to click OK. And you can see we have the case processing summary, no missing values here, and the descriptors for each variable. And of course, these skewness values match the skewness calculated by Excel. So what we want to move down to here is the test of normality. And we can see that the original variable was not normally distributed. The p-value here is less than 0.05. So we would reject the null hypothesis that the data in this variable were sampled from a normal distribution. So we'd assume this variable is not normally distributed. We take a look at the reciprocal data transformation. We have a value of p-value here of 0.371. In this case, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we would assume that this variable is normally distributed, the reciprocal data transformation. And similarly, uh, both log 10 and the natural log, of course, they have the same Shapiro-Wilk statistic and the same p-value, 0 0.062. That indicates that these variables are normally distributed. And then we can see for the other transformations, cube root, square root, and square, uh, in every case here, the value is below 0.05. So we would reject the null hypothesis in these three cases and assume that those variables are not 
normally distributed. Now we don't want to rely exclusively on the Shapiro-Wilk results. So I'm going to move down here to some of the plots and I want to interpret the normal QQ plot for the reciprocal variable and you can see that we want the points to be along this line and generally the points are on the line. And if we take a look at the box plot, you see we have no outliers in the reciprocal variable. For log 10, we can see that the points don't really fit the line quite as well. They generally fit uh, toward the middle, uh, but toward the right and the left, you can see that the points deviate a bit from the line. And we can see in the box plot, we do have one outlier. And we're going to have the same result with the natural log. As we move down to the cube root, we can see the fit is worse than the fit for the reciprocal and the log 10 log. We have one outlier there. Square root, again, not a good fit here on the normal QQ plot and one outlier on the box plot, and of course the square, uh, not a very good fit at all, and several outliers on the box plot. So these plots confirm what we discovered by interpreting the results of the Shapiro-Wilk test, which is that the reciprocal transformation in this particular case is probably the best choice and an acceptable choice would be the log 10 or the natural log. I hope you found this video comparing data transformations using SPSS and Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.